I didn't have clients who were just coming in and flowing in. So you have a period where you're developing yourself, you're building a name for yourself, you're marketing yourself, and I'm telling you that space is usually very dry, no cash. And so Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about... Um, what i think you need to have you need to be before you start your service business before you start your consultancy and uh earlier on today i was having um a chat with a friend of mine a young aspiring entrepreneur who was literally picking my brain and we are talking about what she needs to do, how she needs to prepare herself before she becomes an associate, before she becomes an, a consultant, before she opens up her consultancy business. And that got me thinking, what exactly should you be? How exactly should you align yourself before you start this journey of... Uh, before you start this journey of entrepreneurship this journey where you're selling your services as a consultant as a coach whatever you want to call it as a service provider what do you need to become what uh, attributes do you need to have to be an entrepreneur and so let's get through them there are about uh, 10 points that you need to be before you get started and one of them is learn to be self-motivated and this is after she asked me what what motivates you to to keep moving on i was like you know what you need to be self-motivated entrepreneurship is not for the faint-hearted you need to wake up every day and do what you need to do whether you feel like doing it whether you don't feel like doing it you have to do it because you have to do it and because you're an entrepreneur you need to be to just learn to self-motivate yourself look out at people who for example wh what what wakes you up in the morning this journey this especially environmental consultancy consultancy at some point i used to feel like i want to quit every day i would wake up in the morning and i felt like i wanted to quit i want to quit this thing like i want to quit this consultancy business almost every day of my life i felt like i wanted to quit a consultancy because there's a lot of work that, that is required and especially if you are a, a professional a technical service provider you realize there's so much about business you do not know there's so much including some small definitions like you don't know what is what is uh debit and credit you know i mean so there are so much and you might feel like you want to quit before you even get started. So I think it requires you to be highly, highly motivated and one person can be able to get motivation from within. Get motivation from within. That is going to keep you moving. The other thing that you need to do, and this is a mistake that I did when I was at my work, my previous work, is saving. Save money. My friend, save money. If you're thinking of starting out as a consultant, maybe later or in the near future, start saving money. Whatever job you are doing now, whatever jobs you're getting if you're already consulting, start saving money. Save, save, save. This is a mistake I did. I not save enough that could take me through this period of uh, starting out. When I left my job, I didn't have inflowing clients you don't have clients who are just coming in and flowing in so you have a period where you're developing yourself you're building a name for yourself you're marketing yourself and i'm telling you that space is usually very dry no cash and so i think you need to save enough to be able to sustain yourself for like six months three months one year whatever you feel safe with that can be able to pay your rent you can be able to pay your your you know your lifestyle sustain your lifestyle as you beginning this business before you now can start getting clients who are consistent before you can be able to get referrals from clients whom you have already served so i think you need to save that's a big one start saving and get money saved somewhere before you even start the third one point number three that i want to tell you is selling 
learn how to sell can you learn how to sell technical service providers we are not taught about entrepreneurship we never learned about business we never learned how to sell how to market ourselves and that is something that you need to learn learn how to market yourself learn how to sell learn how to close deals these are things nobody's going to teach you you have to learn them yourself unless you're going to pay me that i can teach you these things so can you learn how to sell can you explore outside and see which methods are best for you to sell what how do you want to get your clients how are you going to get your name out there or your company if you have registered a company how do you want people to know your company whom do you want to know to meet how whom are you trying to sell to and how do they know that you exist and you're selling these services so i think you need to learn how to sell a big one learn how to sell point number four this one some people will uh, will not want to hear or will will uh, think it's not worth or it's not really a good advice but i would advise you to look for somebody whom you're going to work with work for an entrepreneur work for an entrepreneur and hear me out what i have to say about this work for an entrepreneur now specific one and specific example is for those who want to become environmental consultant like my friends that i was talking to earlier today if you want to be an environmental consultant can you work for an environmental consultant who is active in the field you find in this field so many people who are already out here working they are people who are not really doing this full time they are doing it because they know somebody who needs a report done for them they are doing this because they they, they it's a part-time job for them now those are not the best people to work for and maybe that is where you're going wrong don't work for people who are doing this thing as part-time because they're not giving it to you they are all you cannot be able to learn from them look for somebody who is doing this full-time be with them work for them can you provide free services to them like i am in the field i am trying to market myself i'm dealing with clients i'm doing the reports some missions can you work with people who are really just here three or four steps ahead of you don't go to people who already make who have already made it who have already established their companies they are already growing they are already 73 years old they are already retired don't go for those people that is where you make the mistake when i say you work for an entrepreneur i mean somebody who is three four five steps ahead of you that way there are people who are still building they are still going up the hill stop looking for those who are already up there now that way you're going to learn you learn the skills you learn the operational skills that you need in the in-house in-house in the company you learn how to deal with clients because this person is dealing with clients every now and then you learn how to solve conflicts because there are conflicts every day this person is growing so he is grinding you get the skills the real practical deal so when i say work for an entrepreneur hear me out i mean somebody who is active don't look for somebody who gets a job once in a month and is already working for the government but has a side hustle no look for somebody who's active very active and growing somebody you admire point number five build networks build relationships create contacts now these are the people who are going to help you out all right and the reason i'm saying this is because mainly you find like uh, the largest percentage of uh, of our clients in this case environmental consultancy are from referrals you get referred to your clients by somebody you worked with by somebody you helped somewhere by somebody you have a relationship with so it is very important that you're good at networking that you're good at making friendship that you're good at getting contacts because these are people most probably who are going to help you just grow your business from the ground the first few clients that you need you might need people you know to help you to refer you to somebody and then the people you get to know they refer you to more and more and more most of the clients no lie here most of the clients that you're going to deal with in your consultancy business will be referrals so make sure to create contact contacts and be good when it comes to networking these are skills you can learn now the other thing that is point number six how many hours are you willing to work in an hour 
50, 60, 80. An entrepreneur that I really look up to and follow and I really get inspirations from said they worked for 80 hours, 80, 80, 80 hours for 24 to 48 months. Work for two, three years full time in your business. Are you willing to do that? I am still working and working and working in my business. I have not yet made it to where I want to be. I feel like every day I feel like I'm starting out. Every day, every day, every day feels like the first day. There's so much that you need to do. The question is, are you willing to do the work it takes? Because I promise you, the moment you start, if you don't get started, you, you let me know. Please let me know when you get started. Does it require four hours work a day? Entrepreneurship is not easy. It requires a lot of work, especially when you're beginning. You require to work, work, work. But of course, it depends on the goals or what you want to achieve. Point number seven is research. Are you good in research? Can you be able to research your field? Have you ever done any research? Have you even been in, subjected to a research and you had to come up with the results? Like real-time data and, and research, what is happening now? Can you be able to connect dots? Can you be able to understand what this is, hap this is happening and this is happening and that could happen and this could be the result? Can you, be, can, can you train yourself or learn how to research? Be a fast learner. Can you learn? Can you just these are skills that you need researching and, uh, and and being a fast learner because in some cases when you're in consultancy you will need to make decisions that require you to make them immediately without time to think about them or even to analyze. So can you also do a lot of research because in consultancy you will need a lot of research. And I remember this came because the friend of mine I'm talking about the conversation I had earlier. One of the questions that came up was if I use, if I do research in my business or I'm just using the data that is already available. And I'm not really sure what percent of the data that I use that is already available. You need to be very good at research. You need to research almost everything. Remember, you're dealing with services. You're promising somebody a result. So you need to do a lot of research. See if this thing has ever happened elsewhere. If it ever did happen, what were the results? What were the impact? I think research is going to be so much useful to you. So learn how to do your own research. Pole pole, answer panya research yako. Learn how you can be able to, to, to research. And I said, like I said, learn how to do your own research. You can connect this issue to that issue to that issue. And I think this is a, this is a, this is a, is a general business uh, skill that is required. You need to do a market research, know who is your target customer. To need, you need to, to research your clients, know their history, know the services they are into, know the businesses they are into. I think research is almost inevitable when you're doing consultancy. Point number eight, something that you need to learn is to build an audience. Build an audience. What I mean by building an audience is being an authority in your, in your field. Can you be somebody who people go for when it comes to issues, to problems? Can you provide solutions to people? Can you give people uh, solutions? Can, have you positioned yourself as an expert? Do you know how you can position yourself as an expert? Can you build an audience? Can you build people who trust in your advice? People who trust in your ability? People who trust your expertise? Because that is very important. The audience you're going to build are the people who are going to recommend you out there. The people who are going to market you out there. So you need to build an audience. If you're going to market online for your services, then I think an audience, if you're going to market your services online, then I think it's inevitable. You need to have an audience. You just need to create an audience. Point number nine, very important. You need to learn your strengths and your weaknesses. Can you take time, take a month or two to just learn yourself? Can you think about yourself? Meditate about yourself. Just observe yourself. Be conscious of yourself. Be self-aware. That way you're able to see what you're good at 
and what you're really struggling with that people will tell you oh, you're good in this you're good in this you're really really pathetic in this that way you can be able to prioritize on your on your on your strength you can be able to leverage your strengths you can be able to know what business you want to get into because most probably you think you want to be a consultant and then you're going to realize you want nothing to do with consultancy so and this you can only know by knowing your strengths and knowing knowing your weaknesses if you are good with maths if you're good with people if you're good with analytics what businesses can you do because i believe anybody can be anything so just learn yourself know yourself so that you're going to know what you want to do with your life feel feel yourself feel what excites you what are your passions what are you how much pain can you stand do you want to serve people or do you just want to get money these are things that you need to learn before you even make a decision what type of entrepreneurial direction you want to take and finally if you have done all these things it's time to put yourself on the deathbed i mean just go this is a deathbed just lie and just wait for death to come your way and this i mean don't get me wrong don't get me wrong don't get me wrong what i mean is like in entrepreneur in entrepreneurship when you're in business almost every other day is a death day you almost die every day so you you just need to be ready just be there be ready just be ready be ready like i told you initially in my business i felt like i wanted to quit every day why do you think i felt like i wanted to quit because i'm not seeing breakthrough i'm trying this i can't see the way it is working i'll try this not working i try this not working so every day you feel like you want to quit so after you're done with all these things then it's time to go out like push yourself out let whatever is going to happen happen when you're out there and that is now the action that is being now on the playground now get yourself out and on the road now ride get out go and now do that thing that you wanted to do if you wanted to be an environmental consultant go now and be if you wanted to offer architectural services now go and be go out and be if you are a content creator you wanted to offer maybe content creation for companies you wanted to offer social media marketing social media management now go out and be so till next time keep safe and learn yourself and see what entrepreneurial path you want to take are you really an entrepreneur or you just want to remain in the comfort of employment but if you want to be an entrepreneur i encourage you to really really search yourself get these skills these are just some of them they could not all of them could apply to you so make sure to check yourself out and see what works for you till next time